Hey everyone, I'm your astrologer Brittany of Ethereal Astrology, helping you to see the larger story of your life with horoscopes that emphasize the cycles of the moon and the slower moving planets. Today, you're watching uh, the horoscope for the collective for the full moon in the sign of Capricorn, which occurs on Sunday, July 21st at 6.17 a.m. Eastern Time or 3.17 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, what I think is going on here at this full moon in Capricorn is that we're trying to put more structures and boundaries in place so that that we can kind of protect our own self-interest and do things uh, in life in a way that's shorter, easier, quicker, and gives us more independence and freedom. And us, I think, receiving a lot of opposition and pushback, doing that from within ourselves, fear, and from other people, kind of making us get confused, doubt what we're doing, and maybe fall back into old habits, such as people pleasing and overcomplicating the matter and overthinking. Uh, here, that's going on that we're going to talk about today. So if you you want to hear more about that, please do stay tuned. Before I hop into it though, I did just want to let you all know, obviously, I'm posting this video um, way ahead of time before the full moon, uh, a lot more than I usually do. And the reason why I'm posting this ahead of time is because I'm going on vacation here uh, the week leading up to this full moon, um, which is out of the country where I won't have any access to my filming equipment or really to the internet at all either. So I wanted to get this out before I go or else it'd be late. So that's why we're doing it um, here. Um, I hope that it helps you all, especially because I consider this probably to be one of the most significant full moons of the year, other than obviously eclipses, and probably one of the more one of the most challenging, challenging full moons of the year as well. So hopefully this will give you enough time to reflect and prepare. Now let's go ahead and let's hop into it. In order to get started, what I always like to do first is to just place on the chart what it is that I'm referring to here so that you can see it and follow along with me. So let me do that now. Um, um, this video is, of course, for that full moon in Capricorn on Sunday, July 21st. Because of that, I've adjusted the chart here for that lunar event. I know that because I've got the moon here in the sign of Capricorn making an exact opposition over here to the sun in Cancer. And when the moon opposes the sun, as you see it here, that is what is considered a full moon here um, in astrology and, of course, in Capricorn because that's where the moon is. And it's there at the last degree uh, of the signs. Hey, uh, what is this all about? Well, full moons to me are all about stepping into things that we've been working towards for quite some time and bringing them to either completion or fulfillment, right? Full moon, fulfillment, um, especially because that is when the moon is the furthest from the sun. And not only do I see it... Um, uh, as a time of stepping into things, completing them and fulfilling them here. But I also too see it as a time where we get maybe some sort of insight or revelation or illumination that we did not see before because that's also when the moon is very bright in the sky here too. Uh, not only that, but I also as well see full moons about decisions a lot of times as well, especially the sign of Capricorn too, which it's in about decisions uh, here because um, full moons are a function of an opposition and it's hard to do two opposite things at once. You kind of have to decide which one you're going to do uh, here and when uh, as well that's going on, okay? What is it that we're stepping into here or um, doing more fully and getting some insights um, here around. Well, the full moon is in the sign of Capricorn here. Um, to me, Capricorn is a lot about um, managing things, managing things, putting structures in place, so to speak, um, here and structures in place to kind of contain things, keep things in, keep things out, all of that. So I think that's one of the things that we're trying to get insights on, step into uh, here uh, that's going to decide on is how we want to better manage our life um, and what structures we need to put in place in order to... Um, uh, to make our lives better here. And not only that, but I also see Capricorn too, a sign of like putting our lives in a better direction. You know, it's very concerned with the long-term, you know, goal or the long-term outcome of things too here that are going to help put our lives in a better place. So not only are we trying to consider here and get insight on how we need to better manage and structure our lives to just make it run more smoothly, but what in the end is going to get us a better long-term result here as well. 
Not only that, but another word that I use a lot of times to explain Capricorn is boundaries, right? Boundaries are a form of structure here, but sometimes it helps to say that word in particular. Um, so I think that we're also trying to get insights as well on not only how we can better manage our lives and what structures we need to put in place to put it in a better direction long term, but what boundaries, to use that word specifically, might also be the best here too for our situation uh, that's going on. Okay, not only that, um, I did mention this before, but Capricorn to me is also a lot about decisions being a Saturn ruled sign um, here. You could also uh, describe that as commitments, but I'm not gonna use the word commitments now because there's something that might make that a little confusing uh, in my interpretation. So again, I'm just gonna stick with the word decisions for now. There's, there's extra emphasis on making some sort of decision here to follow a certain path. Uh, that's gonna be in our best interest. Not only that, but I do need to note uh, Capricorn is an earth sign, so it's a little bit more practical uh, here, deals more with matter or with reality here and with our situation, which a lot of times need to be done if you're putting structures and boundaries in place here. Um, so there's also uh, that that's going on. We're being a little more practical and realistic about where we want our life to go, what structures and boundaries we need in place to manage it, and what decisions we need to make in order to bring all of that together. Hey, not only that, but maybe the last thing I'll say for now about, um, it, well, one of the last things I'll say for now is that Capricorn does um, rule the highest part of the chart here, which is more public facing uh, here. Um, and has to do with taking on a more public role, putting ourselves out there, you know, or even could be career related for some of you here too. So not only are a lot of these insights that we're trying to get and decisions we're trying to make here about how we can better manage and structure our life and what boundaries we need to put in here um, in our lives, um, but uh, these decisions and these structures might require us to kind of take a more public role uh, in some way in our situation in order to bring a lot of this together. And of course, some of this may bring career matters here into focus for some of you as well uh, here that's going on and require you to be a little more you know, practical and realistic about the situation here and uh, what needs to be done. Hey, any other thoughts that I want to say? Sure, maybe the last that I'll offer is that this is at 29 degrees um, and the second full moon in Capricorn that we've recently had here. Um, and this is a very um, an intense degree. The last degree of a sign is called the anoretic degree uh, in astrology. And yeah, it does tend to be a little more difficult than the other degrees. And it tends to be more difficult because the last degree of a sign is charged with learning all the lessons from the other degrees of that sign and really mastering it and, and doing that sign in a more masterful or refined um, or uh, kind of way uh, here or responsible kind of way here at this time that can be, you know, a little harder sometimes than it sounds uh, to do. So there's also um, the first indicator here that this could be a little bit of an intense or challenging full moon as we really try to figure out how to do all of these things in the best way. So I think that's what I want to say for now. The main themes of this full moon in Capricorn is that we're trying to get insights here on uh, how we can better um, manage and structure our lives so that it goes in a better direction for ourselves and what boundaries we may need to put in place in more practical and realistic ways here um, as we move on and what decisions we need to make to facilitate all of that. That may put some of us in a more public role as we kind of work through all of this stuff or bring career matters for some people to the forefront and be a little intense um, or uncomfortable here as we figure all of this out and how to do it in the best way possible for our situation. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say for now in terms of the big themes uh, for this full moon. Before I go more into the details and the specifics of this full moon and how it's going to play out, I do like to go backwards in time just for a bit here before I move forward. And I do like to go backwards in time for a bit before I move forward just to give you more of the context of how we got here and of why this theme is now coming up to be felt lived through and experienced because I do believe that the context can really change a lot uh, from one full moon to another because there's a full moon in every sign, you know, every year 
right? I think the context is really what makes the bigger difference here um, that's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that. If you're not interested in that, totally cool. Just go ahead, skip forward in the video. I've put timestamps down below just for you, just for you. You don't want to hear it um, so that you can easily get to where you want the video. Okay, so let me go ahead and hop in. In order to give you the context, what I like to start with is going to be an alignment that happened um, a few years ago here, somewhere in between January to April of 2020, because that to me was a very rare and significant uh, astrological alignment. What happened starting in between those dates? Well, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and the South Node all came conjunct here uh, to the middle to late degrees of the sign of Capricorn, where that full moon um, now is around. Okay, that was very rare because Saturn and Pluto don't come conjunct that often. They come conjunct about every 35 years and not always with Jupiter and the South Node there. That's even more rare when that occurs. And not only was um, it rare, but it was also very difficult. And it was very difficult because all of those are hard. You know, Saturn um, uh, and Pluto tend to be more challenging planets um, here. And uh, Jupiter wasn't helping much because it was in Capricorn, a sign it does not like to be in and doesn't function that well in. And the South Node was also there, which is typically a point of release and letting go where things have passed their prime uh, here and are no longer useful for us. So um, that made it very hard. Uh, that I think we're still feeling to this day. Uh, what was the rare difficulty that happened then? Well, uh, the, again, the South Node is about things that we're kind of stuck in that are past its prime um, here and with the Saturn-Pluto in cycle 35 years. So what this could have indicated January, April of 2020 is that there had been things in our life that we'd been doing for a while maybe three decades prior that we either didn't like anymore or were keeping us stuck or that we'd outgrown and just no longer resonated with. Not only was it about that, but it was about us starting to realize that we needed to make big Jupiter sweeping change Pluto and the structure of our lives Saturn in order to release and end these things we didn't like that hadn't been working for us here and ultimately set us up for a different and better experience of life other than what we've been experiencing for a while. So that was when we first realized it and started to make the moves to end things we did not like. Hey, and if I can be honest with you, that went on um, in various forms for about two years. Um, it's not really until this next alignment that I think we kind of started to get a handle on it, which was two years later, somewhere around April of 2022. Okay, around April of 2022, we had a, um, a new moon solar eclipse right about here in the sign of Taurus um, on the North Node. And that to me was very positive because, again, the North Node is more helpful than the South Node about our purpose and in, in, uh, this time in our lives uh, which I think is very good. And um, a solar eclipse can superpower that. So a very good, a big good thing here. What was the big good thing? Well, it was in Taurus. Taurus is a lot about um, stability and security. Um, it also is too about um, fertility and abundance here as well. Um, when it comes to ourselves and our situation. So I think what happened in April of 2022 is that we felt like we had ended enough of these things from the decades prior that we didn't like to put us now in a little bit more of a solid place that's more fertile, fertile for us to grow other things later on, you know, or embark on other things that um, might be uh, better for us. Okay, that then leads me now to the next alignment I want to mention, which unfortunately happened about two weeks right after that, somewhere also around April of 2022. And what that was, was a, um, a full moon lunar eclipse here in the opposite sign here of Scorpio. Okay, now that was a little bit more of a challenge here. Sure, maybe because it's a full moon. I do think that full moons are a little bit more challenging um, than new moons, um, but especially because it was on the south node. And again, the south node is difficult because it's about things that we're used to doing, but that are just no longer helpful for us. Um, so it was difficult because... We maybe we're still stuck in old habits, even though our life was changing, that were hard for us to get rid of. Not only was it difficult there, but uh, full moons, again, are very bright in the sky. It's when we become illuminated, illuminated to the fact that like, hey, I got some habits that aren't right. 
what were those habits that we were starting to realize weren't right? We're keeping us stuck in old habits and patterns here. Well, those were Scorpio habits and traits, not because Scorpio is a bad sign. Scorpio is a fine sign. It's just because the South Node was there at that time. And um, the South Node tends to indicate things that aren't helpful, but the North Node will eventually be there again too. But the South Node was there. Scorpio, in a negative way, if I'm going to interpret it as such, can indicate challenging emotions and indulging some of those. So we could have been indulging too many challenging emotions, especially if our life had been chaotic in 2020 and beyond. That just isn't helpful, right? Even though you may feel bad, it's not always helpful to indulge bad feelings when you're trying to create something better. You know, we needed a different emotional experience. Not only that, but Scorpio too can also be about change. And in this instance, we were stuck in habits where we were changing too much. And we didn't need to do that anymore because we already made enough changes, right? We're in a more fertile place. We don't need to make any more changes. We're there um, in a better place. So that was also hard for us to realize and to stop. Not only that, but um, Scorpio too can be about spending too much money here as well um, or relying too much on other people and our connections with them um, and giving some of our power away to others as well, especially from the some of the traumatic experiences that we had prior that weren't helping. So um, I think that's what, what occurred here also in April of 2022. We ended a lot of stuff that wasn't working for us. We're in a much better place, more fertile and abundant, but we still had some mindsets and some habits that were not conducive to the new life, to the fertile growth and to growing that. And those habits that we had that aren't conducive are indulging negative emotions, changing too many things and being stuck in that, giving our power away, spending a lot of money, all of those things here. They weren't helping here. We needed to, that was going on. We needed to um, adopt other traits instead. And I should note here, we needed to adopt other traits that were more Taurus, slow, stable, secure, self-reliant, all of that. Okay. Um, and if I can be honest with you, I think it took us actually a very long time to get that through our heads of like, what habits need to go? Why do we need to stop changing things? And with these emotions, I think it took us a really long time to kind of figure that out. Um, I don't think that it was really until the following year that we started to get that together. And the next alignment that I'm going to go to was also somewhere around April, but it was April of 2023. I believe. Um, and um, April 2023, we had a new moon solar eclipse uh, here somewhere at the um, uh, later degrees of Aries. So let's look at that. Okay, this to me was meant to be a helpful thing here, meant to be a helpful thing because it was also on the North Node, again, which tends to be a more positive influence uh, here. What was that all about? Well, new moons, superpower, uh, sorry, solar eclipses, superpower things, new moons are new beginnings. And Aries too, being the first sign of the Zodiac was about new beginnings. It's also too about courage and trying again and things like that, especially because Pluto and Saturn had also just change signs around that time as well. So what I think happened around April of 2023 is that we finally started to get it, this different approach to life, that we need to stop changing things and giving our power away to other people and spending too much money and indulging these negative emotions. Here, we started to get rid of those, right, and realize we needed to stop that and feel more ready again to step into a new, different, and better experience of life and to try again doing what we wanted to do a year prior, but that we just had issues doing, okay? Uh, there and to move forward with that. That then leads me on the next alignment that I want to mention, which happened um, a month or two af after that, somewhere around May. I think it was May of 2023. And what happened around May of 2023 is that Venus then went retrograde uh, here in the sign of Leo. And that was a bit of a challenge because it's a planet um, appearing to move backwards in the sky direction that's not natural to it, especially a personal planet, which has to do with matters that are more personal to us or closer to home in a lot of ways. So uh, this was hard, uh, making us feel what? Stuck, stuck, or slow down. Literally, right? Venus was appearing to move backwards, making us feel stuck, slow down, or like we're moving backwards still and not able to move forward in this new and better experience that we've been trying to get to and thought we were ready for again. Why were we stuck or not able to move forward? Well, to me, that was a Leo issue because that's where Venus was retrograde um, here. If, if we didn't have any problems with Leo, Venus wouldn't need to go retrograde there. So what was that? Well, Leo is a lot about happiness, joy, pleasure, fun, 
here. And um, I think that was the problem. We were not. We were not happy. We were not allowing ourselves to have fun, to pursue pleasure and joy in our lives. And I think we're still too much stuck in emergency mode uh, from 2020, from 2020, from the years prior when we were in a life we didn't like, especially with Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn uh, here right around that time. So that was May of 2023, trying to move forward again, you know, in to a new experience after getting my perspective, right? And now another issue here, which is that I'm stuck in emergency mode. I'm not happy. I'm not letting myself have fun and do what I love here, which is hard. And that then leads me now to the next alignment that happened um, a month or two later, June, July, also of 2023. And what happened around that time? Yeah, we'll just say, you know, maybe it was more July of 2023, what happened around that time is that Pluto was back in Capricorn and it made a square to the nodal axis, which included uh, the, the south node in Libra and the north node in Aries. And um, uh, what that can indicate, one of the things that can indicate that I'm going to focus on here is us realizing we needed to make a big change. Pluto. Pluto is about change and transformation here in our lives um, that's going on and that we needed to make a decision. Sometimes squares and the nodes can indicate decisions. We need to make a decision to make a big change and transformation. And with the opposite point of Pluto here in Cancer, near where Venus went retrograde in Leo, we need to make a decision to make a big change and transformation in a lot of things, a lot more things in our life to honor more of our heart, to be more happy, to be more fun, to be more playful, to be more joyful and not serious, stiff, rigid, and all of that, um, which was scary, but I think we did and uh, needed to do here um, in order to move forward. Okay, that then leads me now to the next alignment that I'm going to mention uh, here. I'm going to fast forward quite a bit to this year, uh, which I believe was also around April or May. April or May, what was it? I think it was May. May of this year, 2024, we get Jupiter conjunct Uranus here in the sign of Taurus just a few months ago. This is very recent um, here. I thought that was a good thing. Um, uh, Uranus can be about the un uh, unexpected. Jupiter can be about gifts and good luck or wisdom and understanding here. And Taurus can be about more stability, more confidence, can also help us too with our self-worth, with our money, our body, our appearance, uh, and things like that. And so this was us feeling like we were starting to, after making a bunch of changes, right, and working through a lot of things the past few years, starting to feel like we were becoming more solid in a new experience and like we were starting to have a more firm foundation about what this new experience is and a more solid understanding of how to work with a new experience in life and how to make it better and where we maybe experienced some unexpected help um, to help us on that path with finances, our body, appearance, um, our sense of self-worth in order to move in that direction. Now, was this huge, huge conjunctions indicate things just starting? So I don't think this was a huge new foundation in life with every uh, huge sums of money and everything like that, but it is a very solid start here when it comes to feeling more secure in a different experience in life um, with more of a foundation for what we wanna do next. Okay, that then leads me now to um, a month or so after that, June, June, right? That's last month here. Um, right around that time, we had um, a new moon in um, in Gemini here. New moons are new beginnings. Gemini is about our mind. So because we were feeling more solid in a new experience here, we then started to get a lot of new ideas about what we could do next in life here. Now that we're feeling more secure in this better experience in order to take it to the next level again. And... Um, I think what we started to realize throughout the month of June um, was that what we need to do next here in our lives are things that are shorter, easier, quicker, and can be done uh, in smaller bursts alone or independently that give us a lot of freedom here and that aren't, um, and are, uh, aren't big, long, drawn out, complex things here. Uh, that's going on or a little less committal. I think that's what we started to realize we needed to do because we're still in a new space. We still don't really know what's going on. We're still trying to figure it out. And that that was going to protect us against, you know, some of the challenges that might eventually come uh, here. And um, we've spent some time, especially at that new moon in Cancer two weeks ago, trying to get more used to that. And because we're now... 
in a more solid place with this new beginning than we were a few years ago after working through some issues and now thinking about what we can do next again to move this new experience forward here and are having some ideas about how to do it. We're trying to make some more uh, firm decisions here about what actions we're going to pursue next and how, and we're trying to put the better structures and boundaries in place in order to support those decisions here that it is that we need uh, to bring more things together in this new and better experience that's going on. Okay. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say there. Okay. To repeat that portion, we've been trying since 2020 to get to a new, different, and better experience of life, and it's been hard. It's been hard because there's been a lot of things to end that have been hard to end. It's also been hard, too, because there's been a lot of internal uh, perspective shifts that have been stuck in the past in these negative experience and emotions that it's been hard to overcome. And um, it's been difficult, too, yeah, because we, we've been in emergency mode and hard to be happy and have fun and relax. But we've overcome a lot of those issues and I think are emerging a little bit stronger and more solid in a new and better experience as a result and because of that are trying to consider what to do next in our lives and now make decisions about those things which ideally are going to be things that are shorter easier quicker more independent a little less committed uh, here and give us more freedom uh, that's going on okay because that's going to protect us from any challenges that could come a little bit later hey and that's it Okay, because that's it, I'm now going to go uh, more specifically here into um, the alignments that are uh, this full moon itself. I need to note the aspects it's making and the alignments happening around the same time of it. So I'm going to do that and to do that, I'm just going to place the full moon here on the chart uh, again. So let's do that. Here's the moon in Capricorn making an opposition over here to the sun in Cancer. That's the full moon. Okay. Not only am I going to do that, but I'm going to try to keep the thread going through the video here. The full moon in Capricorn that we discussed at the beginning, the main themes are us here trying to put more boundaries and structures and place in our life so that we can get it going in a better direction and make decisions about that and being more practical, which may put us a little more in the public eye. Okay. Um, so that's what's going on here. Now, before I get into the exact aspects that this full moon is making here, I do want to note something else uh, before I do that, that I think is very crucial and very important. And um, I, I, I think needs to be said in order to bring everything together. And I think the thing that I want to note here is that this full moon is in Capricorn, okay? It's not squaring the nodal axis. The, here's the south node here in Libra, and here's the north node in Aries. It's not squaring it. It's 20 degrees away. That, you know, is a little too far to consider an exact square. But even though it is a little far here, I do want to note, I still feel as though the nodes are highly in effect. I feel as though the nodes are highly in effect because even even though the full moon isn't exactly squaring it here, it is in a sign that squares it, right? Capricorn squares Libra and um, Aries. So in kind of the same world as the square would be, not only that, but we did have a full moon last a month ago at one degree Capricorn. So the midpoint, the midpoint of these two full moons, if you want to consider that, is going to be somewhere around this square to the nodal axis here. Not only do I think it's still in effect because of that, but also too because um, we did have quite a few planets in Cancer the past few weeks squaring the nodal axis here as well. Um, I think bringing that into play and because in, in the type of astrology I do, I do evolutionary astrology by Jeffrey Will Green, the nodal axis is always in play, to be honest, you know, in some way, shape or form um, that's going on and kind of affects all the other, all the other alignments here. So um, I want to take a minute to to talk about that here. And I think the reason why I want to take a minute to talk about that is because this full moon that I've been mentioning, it is about putting better boundaries and structures in place in our life to put it in a better direction and making practical decisions about how to do that. But what, in what way, what is going to put our life in a better direction? What decisions are we making? I mean, that could be anything. That could be anything. And this is going to give more specificity about what exactly boundaries and structures you need to put in place and how 
and um, uh, what the decisions specifically are that need to be made. So that's why I'm going to talk about this here again to make sure we're clear. Okay, the boundaries and structures that need to be put into place and the decisions that we need to make to me are more north node things here. They're more north node things because the north node is a lot about our purpose in life at this time, what we're meant to cultivate more of to help us learn, grow and evolve um, here uh, that's going on. And um, and to focus more on that and the things we need to decide not to do and to move away from are more Libra things here because the South Node is in Libra and the South Node are about things that we're comfortable doing that are just no longer useful. OK, so we're making boundary structures and decisions to do more North Node Aries, less South Node Libra. What is that exactly? Well, let's talk about Aries first, the decisions that we need to do more of. Well, Aries Sure, it is about a lot of things that are hard to mention all at once in one video um, here, especially because this video is not just about the nodal axis alone um, here, but the interpretations I'm choosing to emphasize here is that Aries is a lot about doing things in ways that are shorter, easier, and quicker here because it's Mars ruled and Mars likes to act and do, yes, it likes to act and do things, but it likes to act and do things in a specific way, shorter, easier, quicker here that's going on. Um, so I think that's some of the decisions that we're making. Not only that, but Aries to me is a very independent sign. It likes to do things on its own or by itself because it's the opposite of Libra, a relationship sign. Aries is independent. It doesn't really need relationships to do what it wants to do. So I think there's uh, some of that. I might also consider freedom a little similar to the independence. You know, maybe freedom might go with some of the Aquarius. But I think, too, with independence comes a lot of freedom to do what we want to do and whatever way we want to do it here. So I think that's also what we're trying to make decisions more towards doing things shorter, easier, quicker way, independently, alone, or with more freedom. Not only that, but I might also consider um, the uh, Aries to indicate doing things in a little bit more of a non-committal way. Why? Well, Libra is the sign of commitment opposite it, the South Node, and so too is Capricorn here. And Aries opposes and squares that. It's not really about that. It's just about doing whatever it feels in the moment, <laughs> shorter, easier, quicker here that's going on. And I also emphasize the non-commitment because Jupiter's in Gemini where it doesn't like to be. And... I know how you all, a lot of people on the internet, <laughs> feel about Gemini and commitments. So, you know, that's another reason why here I'm going to interpret it that way as well and focus on that. Maybe if Jupiter was in another sign, it might pull less of the non-committal. Um, but that's what we're going to go with here. So the decisions that we need to make at this full moon in Capricorn are, and to manage and structure our lives better and to put boundaries in place, are to do things in a shorter easier, quicker way, more independent, here less committal, and to protect that, to put boundaries in place to protect that. Okay, what are the decisions we need to make to not do? Not do. South node here in Libra, okay, because that's the south node. We got to get away from what is Libra. Again, Libra is a sign of commitments here. Could be to ourselves, but could also be to other people since Libra is a relationship sign. So we need to stop doing that. Not only that, but Libra is a little bit of a slower sign being Venus ruled, which will take its time or hesitate, right? Like that's a Libra thing, will hesitate. Not only that, but Libra too is an air sign. It can tend to overthink or want to think too much to weigh out information and be a little indecisive here as well. That's going on. So the the what we're trying to do at this full moon in Capricorn, right? To now bring all of that together is to put more boundaries and structures in place here that will allow us to honor our own independence, our own freedom, and to do things in shorter, easier, and quicker ways, okay? And to protect that. And not only are we making decisions in that regard, but we're also making decisions here to let go of relationships or not focus on them as much as maybe we were before here and to let go of overthinking, indecision, hesitating here and slow, long, drawn out, complex commitments that are going to take forever to do. Okay, so that's what I want to say here. This is not just any old boundary or structure in your life to do whatever here. This is boundaries, structures, decisions to protect your own independence, your self-interest, right? That's another word, your own self-interest here and to make your life easier 
here and shorter and quicker to do things, okay? Why? Maybe let me give you another thought here on why that is. The reason why that is is because remember, we're going into a new experience in life if you listen to the context here. And when we're going into a new experience of life, it means we've never done it before, right? It's new. We've never done it before. And when you don't know what you're doing here, when you've never done it before, you don't want to make a huge long commitment that involves other people here because what happens if you're doing the wrong thing what happens if you if you don't know what you're doing and you pick the wrong thing and you make a long-term commitment to another person and then and it's wrong it's not what's in your best interest well then it's hard to get out of and then you've upset all these other people here you know the reason why we don't want to make these long drawn out commitments here is because we're still trying to figure out ourselves and our new experience and we need that flexibility to make mistakes without a mistake being an issue you know, so that we can easily pick ourselves up and move on, you know, and relationships and commitments come later. That's why Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac about ourselves and Libra is the seventh sign of the Zodiac because relationships need to come after you figured yourself out and what you're doing here or else it may not be a good match. Okay, so that's big reason why here we need to dis we need to decide to do short things easier, less committal, more independent here, so that we don't get other people involved in something we're not sure about and can easily get out of it if we realize we made the wrong decision because we don't know who we are yet. You know, uh, that's going on. Not only is that the reason why, but I'll give you another thought here because I feel like this concept might be a little hard uh, or triggering for some people. Okay, but another reason why we need to focus on ourselves, Aries first, over relationships is because us focusing on ourselves and our true interests here is going to attract a better partner. It, not now, not now, but a year or two from now, it's going to attract a better partner because when we're doing, being who we are, and having the freedom to be who we are, we're going to attract the people who align with that, who love that, who are like, yeah, keep being who you are. And we're going to repel the people who aren't working for us and who aren't meant to be with us. And they're going to go somewhere else, find someone else that they align with here. So us being ourselves is actually going to make relationships better later on. Maybe not right away, but it's going to make relationships better later on because it's going to attract people who are more aligned with us instead of us people pleasing. Oh, if you don't like it. I'm going to stop being who I am just for you. No, true relationships are not built on sacrificing your core identity away. It's built on two people having their individual identities supported um, and, and appreciated for who they are. So that's another reason why here, you know, this is happening is actually to help us build better relationships later on, later on, after we first have gotten ourselves more in order. Okay? I want to mention that. Hey, the next thing that I want to talk about here is going to be the fact that this full moon is making a conjunction here to Pluto in the sign of Aquarius uh, that's going on, of course, with both of these things, one at the last degree of Capricorn and one at the beginning degrees of Aquarius. Okay, this to me is a very challenging thing, um, a very challenging thing, sure, because the moon's at an anoretic degree, the 29th degree hard, and because Pluto is here involved. And um, Pluto to me um, is difficult and a conjunction I need to note, I don't always consider as positive either, nor do I in opposition here to the sun. So this to me is very difficult. What is the difficulty? Well, Pluto, in my opinion, can bring too much focus or too much of our attention uh, to an area in a way that's not really the most helpful uh, here that's going on um, and can be a little overwhelming. What is too much of our focus going towards? Well, a lot of that is the Aquarius here, right? Because that's where Pluto is, even though it's going to be back in Capricorn soon. What is um, Aquarius? Well, Aquarius is an air sign similar to that south node in Libra about our thoughts, about our mind, thinking things through, you know, unique ideas and perspectives. So this is too much, still too much in the head, too much thinking. Well, should I put this boundary in place or this boundary in place? Should I do this or should I do that? You know, too much of it. And in, in, more thinking is not better. Sometimes you don't need more information. Sometimes you don't need more thoughts. <laughs> you need the right way to look at the information. So too many thoughts driving us crazy here, I think keeping us indecisive or making it hard for us to make a decision. 
Not only that, but Aquarius too can be a lot about the collective, right? Groups of people, humanity. Aquarius also has to do with friendships. I also consider Aquarius to have to do with social media since Aquarius to do with technology, the internet. Well, this can also indicate as well us getting too swayed by the collective currents. What is everyone else doing? What's everyone else doing on social media? What are my friends doing? What are the Joneses doing next door? What do my friends say? What do the people in my life say? It can indicate us getting too swayed too much by the other people in our lives or the messaging that we're getting from other people as well. Also confusing us. Confusing. Well, what boundary do I put in place? Is it North, North, South, North, Aries, Libra? I don't know. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. This is what this person says. This is what this person I don't know. Connecting us from our own inner wisdom here. Um, I think that's going on. Not only swaying us, making us indecisive, connecting us from our own inner, disconnecting us from our own inner wisdom, but bringing up a lot of frustration. Pluto will do that, an intense, uncomfortable emotion, right? Because we want to make a decision, right? We feel a need to make some sort of decision with the Capricorn, the moon at 29 degrees, because we want to make a decision. We feel we need to make a decision about what we want to do next in our lives here. But um, we got so many ideas. We don't know which one to do. Our friends are saying this. Our parents are saying this. This other person saying that. The the internet's, you know, what are we going to do? You know, taking us away from our own inner wisdom, making us indecisive and making us now very intensely emotional in an uncomfortable way because we're not making decisions. We're, we don't know what decision to make here um, and leaving us feeling stuck. Sometimes Pluto can do that. Really stuck here. Uh, that's hard. Not only that, but this can also in some ways create disagreements. Disagreements, Pluto to me is relational in a lot of ways because it does correlate to Scorpio naturally. We do have the South Node here in Libra as well. So this can also create disagreements here with other people to varying degrees. Some of these could just be casual disagreements. Some of them could maybe escalate to arguments here, but could create a lot of disagreements here with other people. Well, you think I should do that and I think I should do this, you know, um, or differing opinions, especially now with Mars and Gemini trining this spot here that can also just make things really, really hard to parse through here, um, be unsure of what to do. Okay, so that's what's going on here. We need to make a decision here. <laughs> um, and we need to make a decision here to do things in shorter, easier, quicker ways, more independent and less committal. Um, here and to let go of long drawn out complex commitments and relationships that involve a lot of moving parts here but we're really struggling to make that decision because our mind has all these thoughts and ideas that are going crazy um, here and distracting us and because we're listening to a lot of the opinions of other people who are taking us out of our own inner wisdom and who are um, bringing us in a lot of weird directions and making us feel indecisive and stuck and frustrated here that's going on maybe disagreeing with people argumentative just a lot of weird things here that can be hard okay Okay, not only that, but we've also got the sun here and, and Cancer, right? A part of this full moon making a trine over to Neptune here in Pisces as well. And this to me is also a little difficult because it's also at the last degree of a sign. You know, the, the full moon's the last degrees of a sign. Neptune's the last degree of a sign. You hear um, that's hard. Neptune as well as an outer planet. That can be a bit difficult. So this can also be hard too. What is the difficulty here? Well, Neptune can bring confusion, which I think I already kind of explained is going on. More confusion going around. You know, this can also bring, you know, illusions. We think we know what we need to do one minute and then the next minute we think the opposite and we're confused. And just when we think we've made a decision, we, we don't know. So it can bring a lot of that here that's going on. Um, the Neptune can also dissolve boundaries, right? We need more boundaries, but we're not really having the boundaries. Can be some of that. Um, that's going on. Not only that, um, but Neptune and Pisces, Pisces being the last sign of the zodiac, the last degree of the last sign of the zodiac here can also have us uh, kind of like tempted back past towards old patterns, old habits, things that aren't helpful here in our situation um, or lessons that we haven't fully learned yet can tempt us back into that. And the Neptune too can also make us feel exhausted, right? Especially if our mind's going and we're torn in all these directions and we don't know what to do, can make us exhausted, can make us overwhelmed um, here in a lot of ways, very tired, can even make some of us very emotional as well. 
sad um, here too, that we may not know how to channel effectively, especially with the moon being in Capricorn, a sign it doesn't like to be in, that can be hard here too. So a lot of that going on. We need to make decisions shorter to do things shorter, easier, quicker way, independent, less committal, and to get rid of these long, complex commitments, relationships, all of that. But it's hard <laughs> to make these decisions because you know, our mind's going crazy. Other people are in our ear, taking us out of our inner wisdom, making us indecisive, which is bring up disagreements, intense emotions, making us feel stuck and a lot of confusion, overwhelm, wanting to revert back and old habits and patterns, sadness, emotion, heart. In addition to that here too, we've also got this full moon um, in Capricorn making a square here, um, to Chiron, Chiron here in Aries, both the moon and the sun are squaring Chiron here as well, um, which is also hard because it's a square and because Chiron's involved. Square is a hard aspect. Chiron's difficult. Chiron has to do with triggers and securities. To me, it adds an extra gut punch to everything, you know, feeling really raw and vulnerable here um, in a lot of ways. And it's in Aries. Aries is about what we talked about earlier in this video, independent Freedom, doing our own thing that's in our own best interest, shorter, easier, quicker. This is us feeling really raw, vulnerable, and insecure about the decision we need to make. The decision we need to make that's going on, which is to do things shorter, easier, and quicker. Like that, maybe that's not the right decision. Or if we do do that decision, that's a very hard one. You know, bringing up just a lot of deep-seated triggers here that maybe we didn't even realize we had around ourselves and our own identity and asserting that. Okay, so that's what's going on. Uh, don't mean to paint a bleak picture, but this to me is a very hard full moon. Trying to make decisions, to do things in our own self-interest, independent, free, short, quick, easy, and to let go of long, drawn-out, complicated commitments, especially with relationships here. But that's hard because our mind's going crazy. We're being swayed by all these opinions and thoughts of other people here, making us stuck and decisive. And not only making us stuck and decisive, but also confused, overwhelmed, emotional, sad, maybe some arguments there too, and feel really triggered and raw and vulnerable around the thing we need to do. You know, like we don't want to do it. It hurts to do. Like maybe we shouldn't. Here that's going on. Okay. That then leads me now to the next alignment that I want to mention, which is going to be here where Mercury is in the sign of Leo, making a square over here to Uranus and Taurus. Okay, now, this um, is not the full moon exactly, but it's happening at the same time of it. This, to me, is also very difficult, very difficult because it's a square, a hard aspect, and because um, Uranus here is involved in outer planet, doesn't like to be in Taurus, so I think can be hard. What is the difficulty here? I'm going to give you a few interpretations. Okay, here's one. Uranus is about the sudden and unexpected. Mercury um, is about an idea, a thought, news, or conversation, especially if we're too much in the head and listening too much to other people's opinions here. So this can be some sort of unexpected idea or thought or conversation that we might have that could also trigger us and shake our confidence. You know, Uranus can be destabilizing, shake things because it's a revolutionary force and shake our confidence, Taurus. Um, shake our confidence here. Um, and I think make us, make some of us, I'm going to give you another interpretation here, um, could make some of us revert back, revert backwards here into not standing up for ourselves and to not doing things in a shorter, easier and quicker way can make some of us say it's just too hard. It's just too hard to make the decision to do things shorter, easier, quicker, independent here because it feels uncomfortable. It's just too hard. I'm just not going to do it. So this could make some of us not do um, not do anything at all and stay stuck, stay stuck in, in our life here. Um, or if not do, do nothing at all and stay stuck, revert back into old habits like the South Node in Libra. If not, I'm going to, this is too hard. I'm not going to do anything. Then this is too hard. I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing, which is long drawn out commitments to relationships and all these other things that don't really resonate with me and revert back into that. Okay, if that doesn't happen, I'll give you one more thought about this alignment here. If that doesn't happen, this can go another way. This is the way that I prefer for it to go, although I think less people are going to be doing it this way. What way can this go? Well, Uranus is very revolutionary. It can encourage things to be done to a more radical degree. Taurus is um, a lot about confidence. And I even want to say uh, um, your own needs and values and can sometimes be about 
I don't know if I want to use the word asserting, but Taurus is symbolized by the bull, right? The bull will dig its feet in, right? You know, dig its feet in. And Leo too can be bold and stand up for itself and its self-interest. So if this unexpected news or thought from all of these conversations and things that were going on, it doesn't make us hide and stay stuck or revert back in old habits and patterns because it's just too difficult and hard. It's going to make some of us, I think this is less of you, not all of you, it's going to make some of us put our foot down, be the bull and say, no, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to stay stuck and I'm not going to give in to these old habits and patterns, people pleasing, relationships, long drawn out and complex. I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to do more things that are in my best interest, independent, easier, quicker, shorter, and that's going to make my life better. And I'm going to do that no matter what people say and communicate about that to let people know, to let people know what's going on here uh, that's um, happening. So it can um, be one of those interpretations. Okay. Although I need to note, I feel more of people are going to stay stuck and fall back in old habits and patterns, especially with Mercury now in pre-retrograde shadow. Okay. So there's that to keep bringing the interpretation together. I'm Got to make a decision here to manage and structure my life better and put in more boundaries. That decision really needs to be to be more independent, um, have more freedom, do things shorter, easier, and less committal ways here. But um, it's hard for me to make that decision because my mind's all over the place. I'm listening too much to other people swaying me in all these different directions, disagreeing with me um, here, which is taking me out of my own inner wisdom, making me feel stuck and frustrated, uh, maybe a little argumentative, confused, overwhelmed, exhausted, and very triggered and hurt now about the original decision. And that's going to cause a lot of people to um, uh, have a lot of unexpected thoughts here and conversations that are going to um, be too hard for you that are going to cause a lot of people to stay stuck and to either not do anything and all of that or to revert back into long drawn out complex people pleasing patterns that really are not helpful here and may cause others of you the smaller percentage of you but really what needs to happen to dig your feet in and stand up for yourself and say, no, I'm not going to do things that are long drawn out complex with relationships. I'm going to do what's in my interest, shorter, easier, quicker, and all of that. Okay. That then leads me on the last thing I'm going to mention here, um, which is going to be mercury. I did kind of just say it, but we're going to talk more about it um, in pre-retrograde shadow here in, in Leo. Okay. Mercury is not retrograde yet, clearly, but it is now in pre-retrograde shadow, which means it's slowing down, about to go retrograde. And when it does, it's going to come right back over these spots. What can that bring? Well, Mercury uh, in a weird spot like this can bring kind of confusion or uncertainty here, which there's already a lot going on at this time. Leo is a lot about happiness and joy. Um, so there's one way it could go. Not only is Leo about happiness and joy, it can also be sometimes about like Standing out, you know, Leo's known for being bold, a leader, the sign of celebrity and entertainment here, standing out um, on a stage, so to speak. And so this to me can bring, I'm going to give you two different interpretations. It can bring the people who didn't stand up for themselves and who are remaining stuck and or reverting back into long drawn out complex behaviors, feeling like I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to be happy in life. I didn't make the, you know, or if not feeling like you're never going to be happy in life, feeling like you didn't make the right decision and you are unhappy because you did not stand up for yourself, you know, and you're staying stuck. And it's going to cause the other people who did stand up for themselves, who did say, I'm going to do what's in my best interest, no matter what other people say, it's going to cause those people to feel like now I'm standing out like a sore thumb. Now I'm, now I'm too, now I'm standing out like a sore thumb. I feel alone, right? The sun, very bright, hard to sustain. A lot of people around. Now I feel alone. Now I feel like I, I, I put my, stuck my foot too far out and maybe I did the wrong thing, you know, for standing up for myself because now, now, now I'm alone and who else would, people don't agree. People may not agree with me and what I'm doing here. Um, that's also hard here. That may also make some of you want to revert back here. That's going on. Okay. And that's it. Hey, that's it. That's all I'm going to say here. Um, because that's what's going on, maybe now I'll give you some advice here before I repeat all of that. And the advice that I want to give you here um, is back to that Mercury, it's really a lot of things, back to the Mercury Uranus, but also the full moon in Capricorn. And I think the advice that I want to give you here is that what I think really needs to happen is for you to put your foot down, right, with the Taurus, dig your feet in like the bull, Uranus and Taurus, to put your foot down in your life and say, I'm going to do things shorter, easier, quicker, 
more independent, that give me more freedom and that are less committal, even if other people don't like it. And even if it feels uncomfortable, you know, I'm going to do it because it's going to be better for me in the long run and put my life in a better place. And for you to put with the full moon in Capricorn, the boundaries and structures in place to protect that. So boundaries and structures in place with other people so that they know, don't say this to me. I'm doing this thing. You're doing that thing. Don't talk to me in this way. This is what I'm doing. And if you talk to me in this way, there will be consequences, you know, or to put structures in place within your mind so that you say, you know, and, and, or with whatever you're doing so that you say, I'm not going to indulge these thoughts that are going to keep me overthinking long, drawn out and complex or put more boundaries with your work, whatever you're doing for your job so that, you know, I'm going to focus on this thing and not that thing because this thing's easier, you know, <laughs> like it's, you really need to buckle down more, put your feet in to do more of what's in your best interest and to put the boundaries and structures in place with the relationships, the mind, the overthinking here so that they do not get in your way here at this time. That's the advice. That's what needs to happen. Now, does that mean that's going to be easy? Just because that's the advice I'm giving you, does that mean that all of a sudden your life's going to get better? No, no. Mercury is a pre-retrograde shadow in Leo. Even if you take my advice, you're going to feel like you're sticking out like a sore thumb. You're probably still going to feel like every once in a while, maybe you made the wrong move. You're going to feel like maybe all eyes are on you and not so much in a good way here or that you did the wrong thing, you know? So even if you take my advice, it's still probably not going to feel that great here. But I think that's what needs to happen because the North Node is what we're what we're learning at this time and what we need to go towards. Not only is the advice here, you need to dig your feet in, be the bull when it comes to your own best interest, shorter, easier, quicker, free and independent. But I think another piece of advice I'll get, I'll give you is that there's a need to realize that there is some inner healing or deep shadow work that's going to need to be done in order for you to sustain this posture of independence and of belief in yourself and of asserting your needs and values as well. There's going to need to be some healing and shadow work done there. Healing and shadow work, sure, because Mercury is um, about to go retrograde in Virgo and Leo and Virgo will bring guilt and shame. We'll talk about that once it gets in Virgo here. Um, but there's going to need to be a need to do some shadow work and healing. Mercury can be a planet of healing. Okay. There's going to need to be some healing around why we feel bad for asserting ourselves, why we feel bad for putting our foot down, why we feel bad for sticking out. We're going to, you're going to need to do some shadow work and healing there, especially with Chiron being a T-square in the full moon and Chiron's about healing too. So not only as they advise, like you need to make a decision to put your foot down and do what's in your own best interest, shorter, easier, quicker, independent, freeing, but to realize that you're going to need to do some shadow work and inner healing at the same time here because there's going to be some inner resistance to doing what you want to do and outer resistance from people. You know, there's going to be some inner healing that needs to be done here so that you don't revert backwards and some big, strong boundaries and structures in place as well. Um, that's going on. Okay. All three, um, those that are going to be needed. All right. And that's it because that's it. I'm just going to repeat that one last time without the jargon. So let me do that now. What do you think is going on uh, here at this full moon in Capricorn is that, um, we, uh, want to, um, 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 uh, make a decision, I think, to put more boundaries and structures in our lives. And I think we want to make a decision to put more boundaries and structures in our lives so that we can do more of what we want to do that's in our self-interest and it gives us more freedom and independence and can be done in a shorter, easier, and quicker way. Uh, here, not only do we realize we want to make a decision to put more structures and boundaries in place to support our own freedom, independence, shorter, easier, quicker, but we're also realizing we want to make a decision and put more structures and boundaries in place to let go of long, complex projects, commitments, relationships that are going to take forever and keep us stuck in our head here that's going on. And I think that's a good decision to want to make and realization, but even though it's a good decision and realization to make, I think we're having problems really staying true to that and i think we're having problems staying true to that because our mind is going crazy with tons of ideas that are distracting us and taking us in a lot of weird directions and because we're listening too much i think to the opinions of other people um here that is hard it just making us indecisive um disconnecting us from our own inner voice here making us feel um, triggered and fearful, maybe even get in arguments or disagreements, stay stuck and indecisive, making us confused, overwhelmed, emotional, and feel really hurt. Um, whatever we do, that's hard and may lead to some unexpected like thoughts or conversations um, that can um, kind of catch us off guard. 
And because we're, we want to make this decision, but it's really hard to make this decision. We're really triggered by it, unexpected, crazy things going on um, here. Some of us, not all of us, but I think a good bit of us may just feel like this is way too much pressure. It's way too much going on and either not make any decision at all and just stay stuck where we are or revert back into old habits and patterns, long, drawn out, complex commitments to relationships here that could just be very, very hard um, here and not take us in the direction that we want and make us feel unhappy because we didn't really stand up for ourselves and the things that it is that we really wanted. And there's others of us who may feel this frustration and this confusion. And instead of staying stuck and uh, or reverting back into old habits and patterns and feeling unhappy are going to put their foot down like the bull and stand up for themselves, their own self-interest, their independence, their freedom, doing things in this different way, shorter, easier, quicker um, here, which is a good thing, but are then going to feel bad like I'm standing out like a sore thumb. All eyes are on me and not in a good way. And people do not like what's happening here. Um, that can also make uh, you feel uncomfortable and doubt things here. And because that's what's going on, I'm going to give you some advice. And the advice that I want to give you is that second group of people, the advice that I want to give you is that what really needs to happen this full moon is that you do need to put your foot down and make a very firm decision here and not waver on that. And the decision that you need to make here is to honor your own self-interest, to be more independent and free, free, freedom loving, and to do things in shorter, easier, quicker ways, even if other people don't like it. Okay, not only do you need to make that decision to do things in your best interest and to put your foot down here, but you also need to put firm boundaries and structures in place so that your mind doesn't get the best of you and, and make you doubt that. And so that other people don't distract you from doing what you want to do and take you down all these weird pathways. Not only do you need to do that, but you also as well need to realize that there's a lot of inner healing that needs to be done around asserting yourself here that's going on and around why you feel bad about it, why you feel bad about asserting yourself, like you're sticking out like a sore thumb, maybe about why you feel eventually guilty and shamed. You have to realize that there's a lot of inner healing that still needs to be done here around that because asserting yourself is not going to feel comfortable um, here. It's not going to feel comfortable here and that still needs to be resolved and is, we're going to take the next few months to resolve in order to move forward. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Um, because that's it, um, I'm going to say a few more notes now. I have quite a few things written down. Again, I apologize for this video being so long. I'm, I'm, I, I, this to me is one of the biggest full moons of this year and the most challenging one. So I hope you all can understand um, here. But I'm going to give you some other notes um, based on some questions I've gotten in the comments recently. Hey, some of you have asked, do all relationships need to end, right? Because there's a big part about this interpretation that I'm giving you here, which is that you need to do things more independent, freedom way, freedom loving ways, shorter, easier, quicker, long committal. Do all relationships need to end that everyone's in? No, of course not here, okay? The only relationships that need to end are the ones that are restricting, that are not allowing you to have your freedom, that are not allowing you to be who yourself and who you are and to have have that flexibility, okay? Those are the only relationships that need to end. So if you're in a relationship with someone and you're like, we're great, I let them do what they wanna do and I love them for that and they let me do what I wanna do and they love me for that and we work fine together. Don't end, why would you end that relationship? Don't end that relationship, that relationship is great. Stay in it, okay? That's not a relationship that needs to end, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you're in a relationship with someone and you want one thing and they want another and every time you try to do something just for just because you you enjoy it they're making you feel bad they're talking down to you about it yeah that relationship you might need to look at and might need to go okay Another thing that I want to say here about relationships here is that this doesn't have to be all of your relationships either. So some of you could have marriage partnerships that are lovely. You're like, my marriage partner is great. But then you can have a boss, you can have a realtor, you can have a friend that's not. So another thing to note here about the relationships is that not all relationships need to end, just the ones that are problematic. And for some of you, those will be romantic. And for some of you, those won't be. And you may have a bunch of different relationships in your life where some are fine and some are not. And you have to learn to keep the fine ones and maybe get rid of the other ones uh, here. That's going on. Okay. Can this indicate new relationships forming? Here's another thought. Does this mean no relationships at all? Can new relationships form? What is my thought to that question? Okay. 
this is more of a time about being independent and doing your own thing solo and figuring out who you are and loving that. So there is something about this energy that's like, be single for a bit, love your single life, be independent here. That's going on that I do think is a focus. But does that mean that no relationships can form new one? No. Okay, what that means though is that if you do form new relationships at this time here that's going on, um, to go about them in a different way than maybe you normally would and to go about them in a way where um, you're less committal perhaps or where you have trial periods and trial runs. So if this is a romantic thing, it's like we're just dating. We don't need to put a label on it. We're just dating for a few months. You know, that's it. And then we'll see how it goes. Or if this is a business thing, let's do a trial partnership a month long. See if that works. And if it doesn't, okay, either party can cancel. Like, it's fine. You know, it means to do it in that way here just to test things out and to make sure you're on the same page. Okay, not only do I want to say that, right? So, well, so I want to note, so that's how I would do new relationships. If you're currently in, if you're currently in a relationship and that relationship is fine, don't end it. Stay in it. But if there's another one, that's not working for you and that, and you can form new relationships, okay? But still non-committal, temporary, that's going on, okay? So you can see the person's true colors and if you really match and mesh, okay? Not only that, but I wanna say too, this isn't a long-term thing. This isn't like a do this forever. This is like literally do this for like a year. <laughs> do this for a year till like Jupiter enters Cancer next July. Do this for a year and then and then it'll be a better time to form commitments here that's going on. So this isn't forever. This is like literally just for a year, six months to a year. I'll even push it back, six months to a year, not a big deal you know, here to just date or see how it goes and to assert more of yourself um, that's going on. So don't stress out about it and think that this will be forever. There will be a time when I'm going to suggest getting more in relationships, like say when the North Node is in Aquarius, so like two years from now. You know, Aquarius is about friendships and groups, but the North Node is not in Aquarius right now. Yeah, the North Node's in Aries. So I'm not suggesting that at this time. Okay, what else? Do I want to say, what if you have no relationships in your life? So there's another question. Some of you may be like, I'm just not really a relationship person, you know, or just, it just hasn't happened or whatever. Okay. Well then what I might say to you all is if you have no relationships present in your life, then these themes that I'm talking about can be an internal thing or a subconscious thing that's going on. Maybe you do not have a relationship in your life, but every time you want to do something, you're worried about what some non-existent person might think, Right. So there's like, there's no relationships in my life. I do what I want to do, but maybe you have a lot of stress about doing what you want to be doing because of someone else. Well, I'm worried that if I do this thing, like maybe my mom will say this, or like may maybe someone on social media won't like it, you know, or maybe th the, this imaginary person that I'm extrapolating will make me feel bad about it, you know? So also keep that in mind here as well. This can also just be a subconscious thing that's going on where you're worried about other people's opinions. If it's not worried about other people's opinions, right? So another thought, if you don't have any relationships in your life, then also keep in mind this could not be relationship related because relationships weren't the only thing we talked about here in this video with the North Node. The North Node also means doing things shorter, easier, quicker ways. So if you don't have relationships in your life, it doesn't mean this horoscope doesn't apply to you. It means that maybe you're getting, it could mean that maybe you're getting the other themes. That instead of you, you know, having to separate from relationships that aren't healthy, maybe you're having to separate from this idea that everything in your life is long, drawn out, complicated. You know, maybe you need to separate from this idea in your mind and instead operate in a way that's shorter, easier, and quicker here as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, that that's going on. Sometimes these themes aren't so obvious and they function more on subconscious levels uh, here. Okay. Okay. Another thought that I want to offer you is that if some of you are feeling stuck, okay, this is another thing that came up in the comments. If some of you are just feeling stuck in your life here, which clearly is a theme that can go on. If some of you are feeling stuck in your life or just emotionless, like I just don't feel a certain way about one or the other. Okay. Then another thought that I want to offer you here is to do more of the Aries first, and that'll get you unstuck, and that'll 
trigger and bring you more into the emotions. And the Aries is shorter, easier, quicker, right? Do you see part of the reason why a lot of you are stuck is because you, you have this subconscious idea from the way the world's been, all this other stuff, that life has to be long, drawn out, hard and complex. Do you see? And when life is long, drawn out, hard and complex, you don't want to do anything. You don't feel anything. You're like, oh my gosh, like here we are again. Like here's life, just one long struggle after the other, like makes me not want to do anything. But when you start to realize life can be easy, life can be quick, life can be shorter, it can be better. You know, I can do what I want to do. I have the freedom. All of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, now there's all this stuff I could do. And now I feel more excited. So I think there's another thought here too. If some of you are just like, I don't have any relationships in my life. I don't know how any of this applies. I just feel stuck altogether. Okay, do the short, easy, quick, fast, independent stuff, and that should help you to feel more to get unstuck and to go in another direction. Now, does that mean it's going to be easy per se? Yeah, there might be some struggles around that, clearly, as we've talked about here, but that's what's going to help you to get going more and more, and it's going to make bring more of that emotions that you need back, okay? Another thing that I want to note as well, and I think this is one of the last notes I have here, okay, is that... I've, what I've talked about today um, in terms of the nodal axis here is to say get away from long drawn out complex commitments, you know, which can especially pertain to relationships, it doesn't have to, and to go more towards shorter, easier, quicker things, more independent and freedom loving. That's what I've said, okay, as pertaining to the south node in Libra and the north node in Aries. But there are a lot more themes to Aries and Libra than just that. I'm aware, of course I'm aware of that here, but this is not a video just on the nodal axis. This is a video on the full moon in Capricorn, which is different, where I have to cover a lot of different things here. This is not a deep dive into the nodal axis, okay? And because of that, I have not mentioned everything about the signs of Aries and Libra that may be indicated here. I've just mentioned a few that's going on. All right. And I've just mentioned a few because I don't have time to mention everything here. Okay. I also want to note, not only have I just mentioned a few and there's a lot more interpretations here, um, but that feel free to use other interpretations, you know, of Aries as well, right? Like I just mentioned the ones that I can fit in here and I mentioned the ones that I think are the most relevant. So if you look at the North Node in Aries and you're like, oh, Aries is passionate and I'm not being passionate and following my passions right now in my life and I didn't say that, then go ahead, you know, and follow more of your passions. I understand that. I, I think that that communication in language is like inherently flawed because there's really no true way to communicate what is going on within one person to another except through like telepathy or something. So, you know, I understand that. Feel free to use your own interpretations. I have just chosen the interpretations I've chosen for the sake of time. Okay. And not only for the sake of time, here's another point, but because those are the ones that I feel are either the most relevant or help me to explain things in the best way that I think the most of you need to hear. Okay. Okay. So there's a thought on that here as well, like that, okay, and that are going to help me to explain things the best, you know, I, and I've stayed with, maybe I'll give you some, a uh, few examples here. I've stayed away from using the word passion, even though that's clearly indicated with the Aries and your impulses and your instincts, because sometimes passion, impulse, and instinct can get confused with the South Node and can get confused with Pluto, right? Because Aries, fire sign, passion, impulse ruled by Mars, but Pluto as well um, it correlates to Scorpio. And Scorpio, some sources correlate that to Mars. And Scorpio can also be said to have a fiery aspect to it, the phoenix rising, right? Rising from the ashes. There's fire there. So another reason why I haven't gone with the passion is because sometimes we confuse Aries passion with Scorpio passion, which I think and a lot of times is connected to the South Node. So if I say follow your passion, some of you might be like, yeah, I'm passionate about relationships. I'm passionate about ideas and thinking things through and long, complicated things without ever acting on them, you know? And I, I, don't want to confuse you all. I don't want to say passion. And then some of you confuse that with, oh, my passion for people. It's like, mm, you know, that's not the passion we're kind of talking about. So I choose certain words here, you know, for certain reasons um, for why I do that I think is going to get the message across uh, that's going on. 
um, here and to keep that in mind. Do I feel bad about it? I do. I do. I, I hate it every time I have to boil a sign down into like three or four words because it totally misses the point of the sign, you know, um, but I it's hard, right, to communicate about all of these things in these videos and I'm just trying to do the best that I can with the time that we have and get as many themes in there uh, as possible, okay? Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, another thing, maybe one last thought I'll say here too. Yeah, I don't know if I want to get into this, but another thought here too to note, the South Node's in Libra right now, which is an over-attachment to relationships and to overthinking things, it can indicate both. I think it's also an important thing to realize as well that the a lot of adults, the majority of adults, ad adults today, wherever that means in the world, have Pluto in a relationship sign. Here you've got um, Pluto in Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio, right? Which, um, yeah, you've got them there. Sure, uh, right? And and the people who have Pluto, um, so, and I, I want to say this, Pluto, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio to me are relationship signs, okay? Libra and Scorpio, the obvious correlations to that, but Virgo, because it's a sign of servitude. So these are all relationship signs here. And these are the majority of people that are in the prime of, prime of their life. I don't like that word, but like, that's where it is, right? Because the baby boomers have Pluto and Leo, they're retiring, what is it, Gen Z? They've got Pluto and Sagittarius. They're what, in their late teens, early 20s? Is that where they are? They're still not in these the working world, these positions of authority, even though the baby boomers are holding on to those here. And so I think there's another thing to note here is that a lot of the people today that we might consider to be in these positions of authority under normal circumstances here have Pluto in relationship signs. So that means that a good bit of the world today is going to over identify with relationships because Pluto brings a lot of intense desire that can be too much in relationships. So that's another reason why I use this why I've specifically said independent here that's going on because I know that not only is there a tendency with the South Node in Libra here to over identify with relationships, but that a lot of people, the majority of people alive today, you know, in these positions of authority definitely over identify with relationships and definitely are are there and may not be seeing this clearly because Pluto can override the mind here in a lot of ways um, as well. So that's another reason why I say that. If if that was if that was not the case, if the majority of people alive today were Pluto and Aries or were Pluto in, you know, Taurus, or were Pluto in a totally different sign, you know, Cancer, this would be a totally different message. I'd pull out different things. I'd pull out different things in certain ways here that's going on. And if Jupiter was in different sign, so I think there's also a need as well to keep that in mind here too. The reason why I choose certain words here is because I know that there are certain tendencies in the astrology and as a culture here um, that we have that I'm trying to communicate uh, in a more effective way, especially because this is a collective horoscope. Like if I was meeting with you one-on-one -on -one in a reading, it would be easier for me to say certain things or we'd have a back and forth, you know, to kind of talk it out of like, you know, where you're at. And um, in, in a collective reading where you're with a lot of different people, it's, you know, I, I kind of have to go off of a more... Um, I kind of have to go off of more of where the collective tendencies might lie here, um, even though there may be outliers as individuals that's going on. Okay, another thought maybe I'll give you here too. Um, I'm not going to read the inside degrees because I've already gone on long today, but um, another insight that I might give you too is that, um, I guess I did say this a little bit earlier, is that us being individuals now and cultivating more of our independence is going to help us later on band together to help each other out, especially when the North Node conjuncts Pluto and Aquarius in 2027. Because on a collective or global scale, you know, maybe another thought here, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, you know, especially with Pluto at the last degrees of a sign, the first degrees of a sign can create real difficult challenges. And of course, especially in America where I live, because it isn't at its Pluto return. So there's a lot of uncertainties in the world here. And um, this is just my opinion on the astrology. 
here, no one is coming to save us, you know, in the world. Politicians aren't going to save us. Doctors aren't going to save us. Scientists aren't going to save the people in government and authority. You know, owners of businesses aren't going to save us. You know who's going to save us? We are. You are. Into this, the, the small little person sitting at home watching this YouTube video. It's all little old me. You know, you and me, that's it. We're going to be the ones who are going to save ourselves and in the world from the challenges that are going on and create a better world through loving our families, through honest businesses, you know, through helping each other out, through doing the best that we can, right? That's who's going to save ourselves, especially when the North Node conjuncts Pluto. I think that's the end of 2027 into 2028. And this energy right now of the North Node in Aries is trying to get you to not depend on that. Stop depending on someone else to save you. Stop depending on government to save you, whoever gets elected, it doesn't matter. Stop depending on them to save you. Stop depending on business owners to pay you a, a, a good wage and to give you all the necessary vacation leave or maternity leave. They're, it's not gonna happen. They're just not going to do it. Whether they should is another question. They're not going to do it. Stop depending on that you know, and depend on yourself because we are the ones who are going to fix the world here. And it's not going to be these people in positions of power that already have it. Okay. So that's why a lot of this has been happening. The North Node in Aries this year and the North Node in, in Taurus last year is to say, separate yourself from these things here and rely on yourself because, and build yourself up as an individual and get yourself in a better place because you're, we're going to save the world here as individuals banding together. And because we need to be strong first, you know, how can we save ourselves, so to speak, if, and help each other out and unite as humanity if we're still dependent on all these sources outside of ourselves that aren't good for us and don't have our best interests in mind. And if when we separate from these sources, we still feel out of control, not confident, can't do this stuff, you know? So there's a, there's a larger reason why this is happening. You know, we're having to separate from relationships and focus on ourselves and our independence and building ourselves up here and getting ourselves in order and doing things in shorter and easier, quicker ways so that we stop depending on all these other sources of power that aren't don't have our best interest in mind. And so that we are strong, we are confident so that we have our needs met so that when the time is right, not now, but in 2027 and 2028, you can look at your neighbor and your neighbor can look at you and you can be like, all right, let's help each other out. Let's make the world a better place. Now is the time. I'm in a good place. You're in a good place. I don't care about what's going on he, this this government leader telling me what to do I have my own opinions I we're going to help each other out and we're going to start to take the lead to get things together here so I just want to say that as well because I, I do I feel like whenever I start talking about leaving relationships behind tons of people get triggered more so than otherwise I understand it we with the Pluto and the relationship signs here the south node and Libra but it's not forever it's not forever and not only is it not forever, but it's going to help us form better relationships here and make the world a better place because we're not going to be forming relationships out of lack, lack and need to fill a hole, to fill a desire because we're insecure because we can't do life on our own. We're going to form relationships from a stronger place to independent people, both strong in their own right or three or four independent people with the North Node eventually in Aquarius coming together powerful, you know, to make the world a better place. So keep that in mind here. You know, that's what's going on. And uh, it's not meant to be as bad as it may seem. Okay. I hope that helps. Okay, right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull your card. Your card here is the Ace of Wands reversed. And at the bottom of the deck, we've got the King of Cups upright. The Ace of Wands to me is about passion. I also do consider the Wands more Aries-like um, here being kind of fiery. Um, and the Aces to me indicate beginning. So I think this is the beginning of like trying to be more passionate, be more fiery, also trying to assert ourselves stand up for ourselves like it's a wand trying to stand up here um, and us really struggling to kind of do that really struggling to stand up for ourselves assert ourselves do what's in our interest because I pulled it reversed here that's going on and we've got the um, king of cups upright at the bottom of the deck and the cups are about emotions and the king to me is about managing those um, here or or honoring those in more healthy ways not letting those get the best of us here um, that's going on. So I think the cards are saying, you know, 
Now is the time to assert ourselves and our own self-interest and get our own selves in a better place here. And we may be really struggling to do that for various reasons here. And the way to overcome that struggle is to stand more in our truth, you know, stand more in our truth, stand more in our power and manage our emotions so that the negative ones don't get the best of us here and take us in wrong directions. You know, not only do I think that's the message, but I think the cups is also too about intuition here as well. Um, tapping more in, into that. You, you got to learn how to separate intuition from your own thoughts and your own monkey mind. But for those of you who are good at separating that, it can indicate your intuition can really be powerful to help you lead the way, a way that you might want to tap into um, here as well and to focus on that. Hey, I might also think of this as a healing card being cups as well, healing some of the emotional challenges um, here. Okay. Another thing too, sometimes I see cups as water, faith, hope and faith that you're doing the right thing by asserting yourself, um, I think might also be needed here as well. Okay. Hope and faith. Okay. Okay. And to not let, there's like a crazy emotional ride going on at this full moon to not let the emotions get the best of you, but for you to be in charge of your emotions, right? I just keep getting a strong lesson here, especially with the, you know, this king is kind of on the waves here, but he's not beholden to it. He's sitting calmly. So I think those are the messages I'm getting here. We need to stand in our power, assert ourselves, do what's in our best interest. It's hard to do. And the way to do it anyways here is to listen to our intuition, um, manage our emotions so that they don't get the best of us uh, here and not let our emotions sway us in unhelpful directions, you know, to take charge of our own life and just trust and faith, ha um, trust and have faith that by us doing what's in our best interest, we're gonna get to the place that it is that uh, we need to go here. Yeah, that's going on. And anything, any other thoughts? You know, the king, this is a king. It's not a page, it's not a knight. You know, the king makes the orders. He doesn't let anyone tell him what to do. So I think there's another thought here as well. Yeah, don't get swayed by other people and don't be afraid to put people in their place or structures that you need to protect your uh, peace of mind here. Uh, that's going on. Okay, and that's it because that's it. That's all I'm going to say there. I hope that was helpful. Sorry for the the rant. Um, but, um, I hope you all have a good full moon. I wish you all the best. Looks, looks very difficult, um, here. And, um, I'll talk to you on the next video here for that next new moon in Leo. If you like this video, please like it on YouTube, share it with your friends and subscribe. See ya.